Welcome back, my fellow makers. It's Matt from Keep Making, and this week we'll be tackling a diorama from one of my favorite fantasy novels. So we'll start off with the base here. I'm using this cheap photo frame, some cardstock, XBS, and styrofoam, and then I'm sticking it all together with some hot glue. So you can see my 3D printed parts off to the side there. I know not everybody has access to a 3D printer, so if you're wanting to make these stairs, you could easily do so just using some XBS foam, cutting it into like, you know, four sheets and then stacking those sheets on top of each other. And then for the statue head, um, you could do that by like, you know, going to the dollar store or a secondhand store um, and getting like any sort of, you know, oversized action figure, uh, taking the head off of that, and then you'll be able to hide a lot of the... Uh, you know the noticeable details with the painting process and you can cover it with some like rocks and stuff to just hide uh, the seams and stuff like that so there are workarounds if you don't have access to a 3d printer building up the plateau is pretty easy i'm just using xps foam and then styrofoam over top making sure they're sort of uh, close enough to the edge you want them shorter if anything don't have them overhanging and then we can clean it up later with the filler. So moving on to the rocks here, these are just Woodland Scenics rocks I cast with DAP casting plaster. Uh, a little bit stronger than something you'd get at like an art supply store uh, and you can find it at most hardware stores. Um, but you know, whatever you have access to will work fine, just the uh, drying times and the uh, rigidity of the cast will uh, change depending on what product you use. So I just put these roughly where they need to go. Any excess I'm scoring the back and then you go over that a few times and you'll be able to snap it clean off like you see there. Now this material, the casting plaster, um, doesn't work well when you use hot glue to hold it in place. Uh, after a while it'll just sort of uh, fall right off so this is just a temporary solution if you need these stuck in place permanently you'll want to use something like a five minute epoxy super glue won't work well either um, it sort of just absorbs into the material and pva glue will unfortunately react the same as super glue in that matter so, and it won't really adhere it doesn't bond well to the xps and styrofoam so a uh, hot glue for a temporary solution and five minute epoxy for a permanent one so we'll move on to the stone work flooring i'm using this das modeling clay uh, I roll it out into a flat sheet and then I'm using my texture roller to go over it and give it that texture that we need. Um, this is a 3D printed texture roller, so you could purchase one, uh, Green Stuff World has a lot. Um, I think there's some other companies that sell them as well. You could also use, I think there's ones that are used for baking, for like, you know, the fondant uh, sort of per outside, whatever it's called, for cakes. Uh, they're a little bit less detailed, but uh, that's a good alternative, probably a cheaper alternative if you don't have a hobby store nearby or don't have a 3D printer to use. Keep in mind, if you're working with the clay wet as the way I am here, you don't want to adhere things directly to it. You'll probably end up with some adhesion issues. So make sure you're cutting out the hole where the piece will apply to the styrofoam and make sure it's clear so that you can do so. Like I was talking about earlier, the next step will be cleaning up that outside edge and I'm just using a drywall compound to do that. We did cut those styrofoam pieces a little bit short and this is why. Uh, we're going to be filling in that area with this so we get a nice even finish. Um, and don't apply this with a popsicle stick like I did. 
uh, use a spatula or any sort of flat surface. So you just want to apply it to the outside, get it to as smooth as you can, and then later on we'll be coming back to sand it all flush. Last bit is I'm adding a little bit of extra XPS foam and this will help to build up the rubble later on. And once you do that, you'll want to seal in all the foam that is still exposed. So the outside edge we have covered, this foam I just added needs to be sealed, and then any cracks between the you know printed parts and the rocks, anything like that, we need to seal those with the Mod Podge. If we don't, as soon as we use an aerosol can, um, you'll wait until it dries and all the foam will start to eat away. Uh, and so you don't want that, that is bad news bears. Uh, so avoid that by just sealing it. If you don't have Mod Podge, uh, PVA glue works as well. Uh, just sort of the texture isn't as great, so you might want to water it down and apply it in, you know, multiple layers. So we'll move on to applying the rubble here. Just straight PVA onto the base. Uh, then I'm going to be coming in with casting plaster. This is just the same as I used for the rocks. The casting plaster, you want to lay it out on this flat surface. And when it dries, it's like a large pancake, just break it into a bunch of tiny pieces. Uh, and then crush it up for the smaller, you know, broken stone texture. So I just apply that to the base, I uh, make a little adjustment here, um, and you know, uh, make sure you're sealing all those exposed styrofoam areas with priming. thing about this casting plaster is that it's super absorbent and so to seal it all together you just want to spray it down with some water and then apply uh, PVA glue directly into it um, and that'll sort of uh, bind all the pieces together you want to be careful though where you have the smaller broken pieces um, the PVA if you apply it too thick there it might obscure some of that detail and just sort of make it into like a like a blob really uh, so just be careful with that um, I like to uh, pour the PVA over top of it and then after that go in with the crushed uh, casting plaster um, just so that it doesn't get too bogged down with the glue and then we'll finally begin the painting process so to start I'm using a gray primer uh, and then just a white rust-oleum from over top uh, in my last video I did it as a xenothal this is a little bit different as I'm trying to focus the white one specific area uh, and that'll sort of if i'm lucky here will draw the viewer's attention to that specific area because that's where the figure will be standing at the end of the diagram so uh, you can see here it's sort of just right in the middle here and we'll be applying that same principle to when we do the highlights to all the rock and stone um, that area will get sort of a second coat of highlights so the plan of attack here is just base coat wash highlight and so I'll be starting with this black and this teal, mixing them together. That'll give us like a colder look opposed to just like a dark gray or just a straight up black. Then we'll be going in with a black wash after that to give some definition to the shadows. And then we'll be hitting it with some uh, different layers of dry brushing uh, to get a highlight for the rocks. Uh, and then again, draw that visual interest into the middle of the model there. So you can see here as I apply this base coat, it's lighter in the middle and that's exactly what we want. Uh, that'll pull the viewer's eye there. Now I can't stress this enough, do not go and buy like Game Workshop's uh, Null Oil or any sort of black wash you would use for painting miniatures to do your terrain. It's You're going to waste a lot of money doing it that way. You can just simply water down some black paint uh, and achieve sort of the same effect on your terrain pieces. You don't need to use the out of the bottle black wash. So apply the black wash all over the base and then where it pulls up a little bit too much I'm using a paper towel to sort of pull it back a little bit and then we'll move on to the dry brushing.
So if you're unfamiliar with dry brushing, that's where you take a dry brush, um, like you haven't dipped it in water yet, uh, you apply paint to it, you're taking most of the paint off into like a napkin or paper towel, and then you're hitting the highest points of your model with that paintbrush. Uh, so you can see, uh, as I start to do it here, you begin to see sort of more definition. So we're taking our two-tone piece into a three-tone piece now. Uh, and we're hitting those highlights. It works especially great on rocks. Really gives it uh, definition. And then we'll be coming in. This is a gray mixed with black. And I'll be coming in with just a pure gray later on. Only in that middle space of the model. That way, again, we're pulling the eye there. So last week was the unholy guacamole, and this is the snow my goodness treatment for baby. Let's go. Uh, soft flake snow from Wooden Scenics, PVA glue, white acrylic paint, and super gloss heavy gel from Liquitex. If you don't have the super gloss heavy gel, uh, you want to have something that is gloss in there. Snow does have a natural reflectivity, uh, and it's wet, so uh, you want to have some sort of gloss in there. Um, that's the important part here. There's no ratio. I live in Canada, so I mixed it till it looked like outside. Um, if you don't, just use some reference material. Um, and you just want to mix this up until it feels right and uh, you know is is thin enough to apply but thick enough to hold its shape if that makes sense uh, like this nice so if it's a little bit too thick when you mix it just add some water uh, to make it a little bit more fluid and then I'm just using a cheap old brush to apply it to the base So while we watch me apply snow to the base, I'm just going to gush about this series a little bit. The first book is called Blood Song. It's the first in the trilogy, The Raven Shadow. They're all written by Anthony Ryan, and it spans on to, I think, about eight books now, if I'm not mistaken. And wow, the world building is just mwah, chef's kiss to die for. This is everything you want in the fantasy series and then some. Uh, the characters are so well written and, you know, uh, really uh, get you invested into the, the plot of the book. Uh, I can't recommend this enough. 10 out of 10. So this scene takes place at a place called Mars near Olin Sol. The place of stolen souls, the fallen city. The main character comes across this fallen statue. And I won't give too much away, but it's awesome. <laughs> what more can I say? I really love this series. I'll leave you with this footage of me actually painting the miniature. Uh, if you want to see more in-depth videos of how I paint miniatures, let me know. Uh, but there are other great channels out there that do uh, the same thing uh, where I learned how to paint miniatures. Um, I spend most of my time painting the cape on this figure uh, because the cape is sort of uh, signifying of this character's uh, faction that they represent. Finally, when the miniature is finished, this is how the piece turned out. That'll do it for today's episode. Thank you so much for checking out this video. And if you liked it, hit the thumbs up button. Let me know down in the comments what builds you want to see me tackle next. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that when those videos do release, you're notified. Whether you're in 
inspired by somebody else's creation or creating original things for yourself. Keep making.